The height of a helicopter in feet is given by the following equation. S of t, which denotes position, equals 600t minus 2t cubed after t minutes. The question we want to ask is, how fast is the helicopter going at exactly, whoops, at exactly time t equals 12? Is it rising or falling at that time? So before we've had some intervals, now we're talking about a specific point in time. And again, we want to figure out how fast it's going and is it rising or falling at that time? Step one, just like we've been doing with these motion problems, is to write out what is given algebraically. So... We're given the S of t equals 600t minus 2t cubed. This gives the position, position equation of the helicopter. And again, the helicopter is going up and coming down, and we want to know at time t equals 12, is it going up or going down, and uh, how fast is it going? So um, we can answer this two ways. We can answer given the velocity or the speed, and we've talked before about the differences between the two. Velocity is negative, speed is positive. So because we want to figure out whether it's rising or falling, we will indeed figure out the velocity. Okay, and of course we can write out what the speed is as well. So we're going to convert whatever is given verbally to an algebraic expression. That's our second step. What we have basically is uh, t equals 12, right? Um, so they kind of give it to you algebraically anyways. Uh, we'll go ahead and write it. You know, whenever you're stuck with a math problem, just write down what you know, because you can't solve a problem if nothing is given. Keep that in mind. Step three, again, these are the same steps we've been doing for motion problems. Convert the verbally stated question into an algebraic expression. So what is the question asking? Well, I have underlined it, and it says, how fast, how fast, right? That's the question. How fast is it going? Is it rising or falling? So... We want to be precise. Again, we could either um, we could either do speed or velocity, but because we want to know if it's rising or falling, we ultimately want to figure out v of 12. What v of 12 represents is the velocity at time t equals 12. So that's pretty easy, right? And if you want to, you can write s prime of 12, right? Because the derivative of the position function is velocity. So. We ultimately want to figure out s prime of 12, which will give us velocity at time t equals 12. Again, we always want to look at the, the relationship between position, velocity, and acceleration because that will ultimately help us determine, you know, which direction to go. And you'll see this more importantly as we proceed through different, more advanced motion problems. So here we can see that the position function is sort of like your initial or your original function and then from there, if you take the derivative of s of t, you get v prime of t. And if you take the derivative of velocity v of t, uh, if you, v prime of t would be a of t. So we are given the position function in order to figure out velocity. We have to take the derivative, which is like why I like to wrap the, uh, write this map out. So let's go ahead. And go to step five, which is solve the problem using either initial value or derivative procedures. So in this case, we're going to be using derivative procedures, and we're going to take the derivative of s of t. Okay, so when we take the derivative, we get v of t. We're going to use the power rule. We get 600 minus 6t squared for velocity. You can start to see this is actually a pretty easy problem, because now we can just plug in 12 into our velocity function, and that will give us how fast the helicopter is going at time t equals 12. So I went ahead and calculated that, and I got negative 264 for the velocity. So now that we've figured that out, let's go ahead and write this out verbally. So what does that number mean in terms of the context of this question? Okay, so final answer, the helicopter is dropping 264 feet per second after 12, uh, 12 seconds, whoop, that's me. after 12 minutes, and that means it's falling. So when you give a reason for that, that's because the velocity was negative, okay? Now, again, we could say the speed is 264 feet per minute, but um, for the sake of whether or not it's falling, it's uh, 264 and just m, I'm just used to a second so much. Um, for the sake of answering this question, um, 
We want to stipulate when it's falling after 12 minutes. Uh, and we want to say the reason it's falling is because its velocity is negative, negative 264 feet per minute. So let's take a look at the graph and see what's going on. Okay, so first of all, we have the position function right here. And the, vo the velocity would just simply be the slope of this tangent line right here. Okay, whatever the slope of that is. So it would be the, this change in y over the change in x, which we just figured out was negative 264. And if you look at the velocity graph, it's just the y value on this graph. So if you go time t equals 12 minutes, you're going to see uh, this point right here. If you look over at the y value, it's negative 264. So therefore, that confirms the fact that that's the velocity of the helicopter. It's important to note, as I said before, the velocity of this helicopter is constantly decreasing. When it takes off, it's 600 feet per minute. And as, it, as time goes on, the velocity continues to decrease. In fact, right here, it's zero, uh, meaning the, the helicopter has reached its height, which you can actually see over here. The position graph kind of gives you a better visual as far as the, obviously, the position or the height of the helicopter. Uh, but you can see, again, that the, the velocity continually decreases for this helicopter. So basically, if you, if you wanted to mimic the motion of it, suppose this is the helicopter down here. Um, basically, it takes off kind of fast, and then it kind of slows down, creeps until that time t equals 10. And then its velocity becomes negative, means it, mean, meaning it fall, it's falling, but it, it actually, in a way... It becomes more negative, so it actually um, speeds up, okay, as far as when it's falling, or it falls faster, you could say. So, pretty interesting problem. Again, the velocity has to do with the derivative, which is why we mapped it out that way. If you have any other questions about the velocity of this helicopter or velocity questions in general, let me know.